Virtual reality can be an amazing experience, particularly when it's done right. Current generation VR headsets, especially the high-end ones like the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, can create worlds that truly seem real, with very little limitation in most respects. Until now though, display panels on these headsets remain fairly low resolution when taking the pixel per inch density into account. Aukey is here to help solve that problem with the Cortex 4K, which was announced as the world's first 4K VR solution. Is resolution really all we need to complete the experience? Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Headlines and this is our review of the Aukey Cortex 4K. So visually, you'd be hard pressed to distinguish this headset from most of the VR units on the market. It's got stylings similar to an Oculus Rift, but not really dissimilar from most other units out there in other respects. There's nothing terribly unique about it like you'll find with the HTC Vive for instance, but really that's okay since you don't have to look at it, only in it. Some standard elastic cloth straps meet the ends with Velcro to tighten and adjust, and a three strap design with the little extra padded bit at the back really makes this super comfortable. On top of that, Aukey includes a pair of can style over the ear headphones that attach to the strap, making it easy to put on with little adjustment, and as a bonus, help keep the headset in place during fast movements. A pair of USB 2.0 and HDMI 1.4B cables are permanently affixed to the unit and plug into your Windows based PC. From here, the headset gets all the power it needs, including enough for those headphones thanks to built-in 3.5mm audio jacks. There are no outside peripherals to install or configure, and no included controller, so your favorite Xbox or Steam controller will work just fine here. Configuration is done through a piece of software called PyPlay, which originally seems to be built for the Pimax 4K headset that's floating around on the market. And in fact, the headset itself seems to share a lot of similarities with this Pimax 4K headset. PyPlay is just here to help configure the headset. All the rest of the magic is done either in Steam VR or the Oculus Store, both of which are supported out of the box. Oculus support is done via the popular Revive hack, which is automatically installed with PyPlay. So while there's no additional configuration needed to get it working, there's no guarantee that Facebook will continue to play nice with the rest of the VR industry as they thankfully have started to. The experience here is an entry level one all around though. Since there are no additional peripherals to detect where in space your headset actually is, movement will be similar to a Gear VR or the Google Daydream view. It's basically a mobile VR movement style with an extra PC graphics boost at the end of the day, or more or less a high resolution resolution Oculus Rift DK1. This means that you can rotate your head and tilt it as well, but panning or any sort of vertical movement is simply not possible, and room scale can be thrown completely out the window. There's no support for motion controllers either, so you'll be staying in a seated VR experience the whole time. This works great for games like Lucky's Tale, Detached, Battlezone, or most of the other seated experiences we tried, minus of course the ones that require motion controllers or spatial movement of the head. Some titles that require spatial movement are a little surprising though, like Kronos for instance, a Zelda-like game that doesn't seem like it would need such a feature, but was unplayable on the Cortex 4K because of it. The display panel is great in some respects, but disappointing in others. The Cortex 4K supports 60Hz regular VR, if you will, or 90Hz asynchronous projection for those titles that can't quite hold 60 frames per second steadily. The resolution is incredible though, and it's noticeably sharper than either the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. Text is clearer, and distance elements in games are easy to see. What's interesting is that the panel doesn't actually render games at 4K, rather it's 2K or better known as Quad HD to some in the phone world. This image is then upscaled to a 4K panel, meaning you won't get the clarity of a true 4K image, but you also won't be getting the absolutely massive performance hit that 4K and VR entails. The other advantage of having a 4K panel, even if it doesn't render at that, is a near complete lack of screen door effect, so that pixel structure is not visible, unlike what you'll find with the vast majority of VR headsets out there. The downside to the display is that it's LCD. LCD has a lot of negatives over OLED displays that ship with units like the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, including important things like black levels and pixel persistence rates. Colors aren't as vibrant either, and while the black levels can be distracting at times when compared to an OLED VR display, it's that higher pixel persistence rate that's the only problem that can't be easily overlooked. It's because of this that you'll see trails behind moving objects in many games, especially ones with bright colors or high contrasting, fast moving objects, and it's likely that this will cause some people to get sick. VR is a funny thing when it comes to motion sickness, and there are a few key factors that are absolutely needed to complete the puzzle and avoid such things, and unfortunately for the Cortex 4K, low pixel persistence is absolutely required. 
It's not a 100% deal breaker here, especially if the price were right, but that's of course the other big downside too. At $399, this one is priced dangerously close to the Oculus Rift Consumer Variant 1, a unit that's about $50 more expensive, and both comes with a pack-in controller as well as a camera that gives it true depth to head motions. It's this last point that makes the headset very difficult to recommend at the current price, but if that price drops down below $300, the conversation might change a bit. As it stands, the Cortex 4K offers too little for the price, and while it excels at some things, headsets that are only slightly more expensive focus on more important aspects than resolution. Once that price drops, this could be a great contender for entry-level PC VR, but until then, it's unfortunately a no-go for Aki. We hope you enjoyed that review and will subscribe to us for regularly updated content. Chat with us in your favorite social media outlet, and don't forget to check out AndroidHeadlines.com for 24-7 tech news coverage. Thanks for watching, and until next time.